welcome back to the channel everyone we're gonna be doing the Raceland bag install today we got the passenger side done already so now we're gonna take you guys through the driver side um, installing the front and rear bags and uh, what you guys can expect from this install all right so one of the first things you can do um, even before the car is jacked up is you want to remove at least this wiper blade you don't really need to remove that one um, so just remove this it has a, just a little um, little rubber cap, plastic cap. Um, I've already loosened it so they pop off pretty easy. And then you just have a nut there. Um, let's see. There we go. I just tighten it back up to hand tight. They shouldn't be that tight or that loose. Um, and then to remove the wiper blade, you'll kind of lift up on this point and it will kind of, you'll kind of have to jiggle it back and forth. If I can, you can lift it up as well, it makes it easier. Then you can kind of just get it to come off like that, and then go to that side. Then once you have that off and you remove this weather stripping, remove that, and then you'll be able to lift this up and get to the top of the suspension. You can unbolt it from there. All right, and that's one of the first things you can do. Um, makes it easier just to get in there and stuff All right, so once you have taken off your wiper blade um, and exposed the top of the suspension um, those mounts and um, Nuts Let's see if I can get it to focus So now you can go ahead and take off the sway bar links um, This one is already off. I get if I can point the camera in the right direction. This one's already off um, I'll explain that later um, but It'll just be a bolt right there on the back. These are coilovers that I already had installed. Now, it'll be a little bit different if you're coming from stock suspension, but um, this is this is what we have to work with. So you can undo those two points for the sway bar links. We've so that one and that there. All right. So once you have both of your sway bar uh, nuts undone. For the sway bar link and go ahead and do this 18 millimeter nut for the bottom of the strut all right and once you've taken off the bolt for the bottom strut if i can get it out the back of it will come out right there as you can see right here take that out Once you've got that bolt out, you can go ahead and move on to this 10 millimeter nut right under there. Uh, that'll all be holding the brake line and the speed sensors. Um, take that off just to give you a little bit more breathing room. Keep them from getting uh, too stretched out and getting too much tension on them when you're trying to remove the coil over itself. All right, so once you've gotten that 10 millimeter nut free, you can kind of move uh, the brake lines and the speed sensors around um, and then after that you'll want to get the strut spreader if you have one if not you'll have to make shift something um, right in the back here there's a little seam uh, put the strut spreader in and then uh, we'll try to get this the bottom half of this front strut try to get that out of this bottom sleeve and then once you get it out of the bottom sleeve We'll go ahead and go up top and remove the nuts that are up there. So here we have our strut spreader tool. You can kind of see the shape. The camera doesn't really want to focus on it too well. Um, we can go ahead and stick this right into the back of the sleeve back here. There's a little gap you can put it in. And then you'll twist it to make that shape perpendicular. Um, and it should spread like it just the name of it suggests it'll spread this sleeve and then you can go ahead and move this entire thing down and get the strut out so that is what we are going to attempt to do so close so close yeah so far away make sure not to get your hands stuck in between uh, where the strut spreader is spreading we'll be back 
All right, once you finally got it out of the sleeve, uh, we can go ahead and move to the top. Um, when you're doing this, be careful that this whole thing does not move too far out in that direction, because um, you do not want uh, the joints inside of the boot there to come undone. It's like dislocating a knee. That's no good. So try and keep it stuck in its original position. We'll just go ahead and move to the top, get this all undone, and we can take the coil out. All right, to get at the top of this strut, we'll just go ahead and lift that flap up. And you got three 13 millimeter, uh, I guess these, in this case these are bolts. Um, go ahead and undo those and then once you get that done, it should be able to just fall right through. So ideally, have a second person down there in order to grab it. I'm going to go ahead and undo those, and then we can take the coilover out. All right. So coilover is out. Now we can get started on working on installing the front bag, which is right there. So here we have the front bag. Uh, we've got it set up. That's how many threads we have left, if I can get it to focus. Focus. All right. That's the threads we're looking at, we're gonna tighten this up. Um, we're going for maximum low on this. We're trying to get the Jetta to lay frame. So we'll go ahead and tighten up this spanner wrench, and then we're gonna thread the, the uh, braided hose right into there. Um, and they make this kind of tight um, you'll have to get the hose to lie right in between one of these notches um, but it's pretty easy uh, we can get that done right now uh, Teflon tape and the threads we're gonna go counter or I'm sorry uh, clockwise the threads it's going that way always do clockwise kids always do clockwise go with the threads and Brian about how many times are we gonna wrap this around here uh, probably five, six times. All right, and then just tear it off like that, nice and tight. Now we're good to go. All right, so we need to put grommet, a grommet around this metal hole because um, it's a little abrasive. So we are using some three sixteenths uh, fuel line. And we'll cut it to length if you guys can see we'll cut it to length and then splice it lengthwise and then wrap it around and we'll show you guys what that finished product looks like all right so we've finished the grommeting on this side already so that's what I'm gonna show you guys um, as you can see just that rubber hose in there hopefully you guys can see that it's a little dark but yeah we just cut it to length and then split it lengthwise and then wrapped it around the hole and it actually is working perfectly. So that's what we have done for that. All right, so we have braided hose zip tied up here to the brake line, and then eventually we'll run it down. It'll basically be following the brake line exactly. Um, so we have the air hose coming through the body here, right into our fitting. Uh, we're gonna leave it just kind of hanging out there like that for right now, um, so we can once we get air going to the bag, we can test all the fittings um, for any of the leaks and stuff like that. So just make it a little easier to get to, and then we'll put everything away more permanently uh, later in the video. All right, so things tight. We're gonna go ahead and thread the braided hose. We thread it right into there, and we'll lay. It'll lay right in between the hole for this uh, this collar here. So it'll lay right in between it, just enough clearance. All right, we got this end of the braided hose all threaded in with the thread sealant. Now we're going ahead and do this other end, which will connect to the fitting, so you can connect this braided hose, connect the braided hose to the air hose, which is right there. All right, we have all of the fittings 
tightened with thread sealant on them if I can get the camera to focus. The camera will never focus. Um, we have upgraded, actually, upgraded fittings, air fittings. Uh, these are metal instead of the plastic ones that come with it. Um, that is a shout out to DS Customs, hooking it up. Um, and now we can go ahead and get working on installing these. Um, what we have found out is that uh, installing the bag um, into the base first uh, is a lot easier. So install it to the base, uh, get it tightened in there, and then use a jack uh, to jack it up to the top and then bolt it down from there. That's the easiest way is, uh, from what we've seen working on the other side. All right, we got the base in. Uh, we have not put in the bolt yet, but we will in a second. Um, then we'll get the jack, jack it up from the control arm, and then get the nuts on top of these bolts uh, right up there. All right, so there's one special tool you'll need for this, this bolt right here. There's a star pattern, it's not like a normal Torx. I'm not sure how many teeth it has, maybe you guys can see that hopefully. Uh, but that is for this bottom sleeve here that connects up to this nut. So that is one thing you may need unless you can do some uh, creative tool management like uh, we do. We got, what do we got here Brian? A little, little pry bar. A little pry bar. <laughs> pry bar action. Alright, so uh, doing some lesson 101 on creative tool management. Uh, using a pry bar in place of a, I guess a star of some sort. Oh, I like a 13 pointer. Somewhere so, so we're gonna do all the dude. Stick that in there. Just wedge it. And it'll be just enough to hold it for us to get the bolt going. Okay, it's done that for now. We'll do a final torque on it when we get the top in. What we have going on here is my lovely assistant Brian will be uh, jacking this entire thing up from the control arm. That way we can align the holes up there. Just a lot easier. Align the holes and then get the uh, nuts on. Got the bag to come up out of the top. Now we will take the 13 millimeter nuts and their washers. And then for these washers, you will for these washers you'll want to make sure that the flat side is down. We'll get back to you guys when we got everything tightened up. Got all the nuts tightened. Uh, now we can go ahead and put this weather stripping back on. Don't really need to get in there anymore. And just to mention these coilovers, just kidding, these aren't coilovers. Uh, these bags don't don't come with adjustable dampening, um, so just something to to look for. You're not paying that that insane price for the Airlift Performance Series, which do have it, um, but you can always adjust it with with air pressure and stuff like that. We'll take a look at that um, probably in a couple couple episodes. We'll move down here. And we will probably get started on installing the probably get started on installing the uh, the new sway bar links. We have one hole there, and another one will install there. If you guys can even see in there. All right, so we have our sway bar link right here. We have you guys probably can't see, um, but this shiny silver thing. There we go, focus. We got two 19 millimeter nuts, there's that one. And then we will have this one on the back side here. Let's see, so. And we do have this jacked up still, um, so it can actually make that distance. Actually, when you're installing these, if you're doing this part, just the sway bar length, if you're doing it um, the car side, um, one side at a time, um, you will have to loosen the other side in order to get 
um, this on because obviously the sway bar is connected to the other side as well. So that might be a problem you guys might run into. So just make sure that the other side is loose enough to where you can get uh, this off. So we'll tighten this up and we'll get back to you guys and we'll probably figure out a way to route this braided hose. Um, and then we'll get this 10 millimeter nut back on for the brake line and the speed sensors. All right, so we have our links are in. Now we will put back the 10 millimeter bolt back in here somewhere. Okay, we're gonna have to cut. No, oh, and I lost it. Gone forever. Well, we're gonna cut from here. Um, just get this, get this bolt back in there. Yeah, whatever. And then we'll we'll come back and we'll do the we'll do the that. All right. All right. So we're just gonna zip tie the braided hose, and we want it basically to follow the brake line um, because we figured that was the probably the safest spot for it. Uh, when we air out and stuff. Um, and then we have the air hose just coming right out of that hole. We're gonna trim this up and then attach it to this fitting right here. Um, and we'll get back to you guys when we get all that done. All right, so we have braided hose zip tied up here to the brake line. And then eventually we'll run it down. It'll basically be following the brake line exactly. Um, so we have the air hose coming through the body here, right into our fitting. Uh, we're gonna leave it just kind of hanging out there like that for right now. Um, so we can, once we get air going to the bags, we can test all the fittings um, for any of the leaks and stuff like that. So just make it a little easier to get to. And then we'll... All right guys, when you get the bag in, um, I forgot to explain this, make sure that the braided hose is coming out of the back of the bag, if you guys can see that. Um, not basically it's farthest point away from the wheel, not the back side, but um, just just towards the back. That way you don't get the hose rubbing at all. We had a little bit of rub right there, as you guys might be able to see. Um, so everything's good as of right now. We're gonna hop in the car and see if we can't get these bags to fill up to about 50, and then we'll test the fittings. We'll spray them down, and we'll show you guys that. Yeah. 